Hello and welcome again. In this sequence of videos, we're going to start a new topic, which is uh, an introduction to public cri cryptography, which actually differs from what we have been seeing so far. And, and I'm going to explain the difference uh, in a second. Now, this public cri cri key cryptography is also known as asymmetric cryptography. So all the things we have been doing up to now are all symmetric cryptography. So let's recall that before we actually go into the details of the public key cryptography or asymmetric cryptography. So what is symmetric cryptography? Now remember that the name symmetric comes from the fact that when you want to encrypt or you want to decrypt the message, you're going to use exactly the same key. Now, uh, remember the setup we had before a long time ago when we started the class, we had Alice, that's the person who wants to send messages, and Bob, that's the person who received the messages. So X here will denote the plain text, uh, Y will denote the cipher text, and the K here will be the key, which is the same key for encryption and decryption. So Alice will encrypt the message using the key. It's transmitted through an insecure channel here, which is denoted by this arrow here. And then Bob gets it and decrypts that with exactly the same key. And so he gets the plain text. Now, remember, again, symmetric means is uh, because uh, we have exactly the same key for encryption and decryption. And that's what we have been doing all this time. So the algorithms we cover so far, which with the algorithms uh, this, that are symmetric, that use the same key for encryption and decryption, are the stream cipher, which we, we saw uh, at the beginning of uh, the modern cryptography videos, the DES or the data encryption standard, which is symmetric cryptography or symmetric algorithm, and the last one we saw, which is the advanced encryption standard, which is also symmetric. It uses the same key for encryption and decryption. So all we have been doing up to now is just symmetric cryptography. And what we will do now, from now on, is asymmetric cryptography, or also called uh, what I have here, which is public key cryptography, is exactly the same. They are exactly the same thing. So, so what is what do we need asymmetric? Why don't we just uh, just do symmetric and do everything with symmetric cryptography? The reason for that is because there are several issues that actually I haven't mentioned to the whole class yet because those are the issues that are concerned with the asymmetric cryptography. That's what asymmetric cryptography was kind of invented in a sense that is because there are some issues with the symmetric cryptography. So let's discuss some issues now. So the issues are with symmetric cryptography are this, the key distribution problem. Now I'll explain this and ask, this is actually very crucial the key distribution problem. Now, the key must be established between Alice and Bob. What do I mean by that? So, so here, let me go back here to the to the uh, picture. Now, if Alice and Bob want to communicate, they first have to agree on a key. Okay. Now, how do we or how do they agree on the key? Now, they cannot simply send the key through the channel because it's insecure. Maybe you might think, okay, maybe they can uh, meet and share the key. Sometimes that's not possible. So for example, if you're trying to communicate with a person who is far away, but you cannot uh, meet with them and you wanna encrypt messages, then sharing the key is not an option. Also, another thing is when you do, for example, online banking and all those kinds of things, you don't actually have to go to the bank to get your key. So the key must be established, even if though the person of the parties that want to communicate, they cannot meet to share the key. So that's the problem. The key distributor problem is that for the symmetric cryptography, we were doing all this time under the assumption that they already share the key, but how do we share it? And in, in the case, how do we share it in a secure way? Um, so that is a problem. So the key distribution problem is a big problem in the symmetric cryptography. Uh, once we establish the key, everything is okay, but how do we send the keys? Because if, if we had a channel that we can set the key safely, why don't we use that channel for all communication? The problem here is that the channels are all insecure. So we need to have a way to share the keys if the parties 
cannot meet. So that's the key distribution problem, which is a big problem here in symmetric cryptography. So that's problem one. Now, problem two is the number of keys uh, that you need to create if you want two parties to communicate. So this is a typical example. Suppose you have a network, so whatever, ne whatever you call that network or a social website or whatever, and you have an user. So let's say you have a thousand users, for example. Now, if you want those users to communicate with each other securely, and you just want to use symmetric cryptography, then every pair of users, users should share one key, and the keys should be different for all pairs of users, of course, because uh, then if everyone uses the same key, then how can you distinguish between one pair and the other to do secure communication between the users? So the number of keys is a problem here, and I draw a little a bit of a, a um, diagram here. So suppose you have a network that has n users, so I'm going to call here user 1, user 2, user 3, and user n. And these are the same users, user 1, user 2, user 3, and user n. So I'm, I'm using the same columns here, and they represent the same users. Now, user 1 doesn't have to share a key with user 1 because you don't have to do secret things with yourself. So user 1 has to have a key to communicate with user 2. Same thing, user 1 has to have a key to communicate with user 3, and so on and so forth, until you get to user n. So you have to, for user 1, you have to get n minus 1 keys, because you don't have to communicate with user 1. User 1 doesn't communicate with user 1, communicates with the others. You have n minus 1 keys. Now, user 2, I already established the communication with user 1 in here. User 1 and user 2 already have a key. So user 2, I have to create another pair Another key here for this is to user, user 2 and user 3, and so on and so forth. So I go down the list, and for every pair of users, I need to create a key. If you actually count the number of keys that you need to make for every pair of users, and I'm not going to prove this, but there is a way to prove it. And in this case, we will have to take my word for it. If you have n users, then in that, in that uh, network, if they have n users, the total number of keys that you have to store in your network so two of the users can communicate is n, n minus 1 divided by 2. So if you have n users, this is the number of keys that you need to store in your network. So two users will uh, communicate securely. Now, for example, if you have 5,000 users in a network, which is very easily, for example, if you have a messenger, Yahoo Messenger, or Skype or anything like that could easily go over 5,000. So I'm being really kind of uh, not realistic here. This number should be a little larger. Now, if assuming that you have only 5,000 users in your network, then the number of keys you have to store using this, a number here, will be 5,000 times 5,000 minus 1 because n is 5,000 divided by 2. And if you actually do the math here, you're going to end up with this many keys, only for 5,000 users. Now, you kind of should agree with me that this is too many keys to store. I mean, this is just, for 5,000 users, I need this many keys. That's just way too many keys to store. So that's another problem. If you use a symmetric cryptography for all communication, then we'll have first the problem of how do you establish the key in the first place between two users that cannot meet to share the key, and second, the number of keys just gets too big. There's another problem also. Uh, and the problem is there is no protection against cheating by Alice and Bob. And the reason for that is because if because Alice and Bob have exactly the same key, they essentially have the same power to create encrypted messages. So how, how can you differentiate between Alice and Bob if they exactly have exactly the same key? Let me give you an example of this. So in e-commerce, so communication, um, buying things online, or checking your bank account. And this is actually a big problem. And the problem, let me give an example like this. Suppose uh, the parties that are communicating here are a bank and Bob. So I'm replacing Alice here for the bank, just as an example. And let's say you're gonna use symmetric uh, cryptography. So that means that the bank and Bob will use exactly the same key for encryption decryption. 
Now, the problem is nobody is stopping the bank saying the bank could falsify an encrypted transaction saying that it came from Bob. Now, the bank could easily do that because the bank has the key. So the bank could self-create a message that says Bob actually sent me this message, encrypted message, saying that the, he actually withdraw some money. So in saying that it came from Bob, that can easily be done. So that's the problem, cheating. Cheating is you cannot verify here that either party will actually be cheating, uh, saying that the other pe person created that message. And that's the third problem of symmetric cryptography, cheating between the parties. The first, the first one is how do you establish the keys? The second one, if you use symmetric cryptography, there's just too many keys to store. And the third one, there is no protection against cheating. So there must be a way, another way that we can solve all the problems. So the first problem is there must be a way that we can kind of go over the problem of the key distribution. So how do we share the key? Number of keys. We need to reduce the number of keys for communication. It's just not, it's not uh, feasible to have this many keys to store if you have end users. And the third one is cheating. Now, asymmetric cryptography kind of solves those three problems, and that's why it was created. So symmet asymmetric or public key uh, uh, is a way to solve the problems or of symmetric cryptography. So again, the last one is no protection against cheating by Alice and Bob with the example of there of the bank. All right, so so that's actually all I have to say about, about this introduction. Now, uh, in the next video, I'm gonna discuss a little bit more about the asymmetric cryptography. So this was just an introduction uh, on telling you exactly why symmetric cryptography is just not enough. We need something else to solve all these three problems we discussed now. So in the next video, I'm gonna discuss a little bit why, what is asymmetric cryptography? How do we, do we approach it? How do we gonna solve the problem or uh, the, the key, the key sharing the key and all other problems? So in the next video, I'll discuss a little bit more in detail what uh, public cryptography is and how some of the problems are gonna be solved with it. So I'll see you in the next video.